Hello, um, I want to show you how to use SPSS but um, to do it fairly quickly. So um, I'll use some data that I collected a few years ago. I wanted to find out how much um, British students drink. As you probably know, they drink too much. So I gave three classes a little questionnaire, asked them how many units of alcohol, about half a pint of beer that is, how many units of alcohol they, ate, they drank on Saturday night, Sunday night and Monday night and I think the questionnaire was on Tuesday so they should have been able to remember. I also asked them how many um, cigarettes on average they smoked every day and what age they were and what course they're in. Um, FB by the way stands for a full-time business course. Okay um, my suggestion is that you start off by um, entering the data in Excel and the sort of format you want is on the screen in front of you. Um, the first First row, I seem to be missing. Yeah, the the, the first row should be um, the column headings: sex, age, course, sat units, sun units, etc. Um, SPSS is actually a very old program, so it's worth making these um, column headings fairly short. And I don't think it likes um, spaces. Okay, so then each each row is then. Um, data for um, one of the one of the students, and I think I can't remember how many there are. I think there's just over a hundred. Um, as it turned out, they all um, they all entered all the data. But let's just um, imagine there was some missing data. Suppose the first person um, who was actually a man, M4, M4 male, F for female, of course. Suppose he hadn't answered it. Um, the way to enter missing data is just to leave a blank. So I'll delete that so there's nothing there. And let's imagine that he was too drunk on Saturday to remember what he'd drunk then, so let's delete that. Okay, so this is the basic um, format, and you can do any sort of um, easy preliminary analysis with Excel. The other thing it's worth doing is sort of just um, scan through it to make sure it all ri rings true. And if you do that, you'll find this young woman, age 20, um, on the full-time business course, and I think she, I think she was up for the lecture at nine o'clock in the morning. She drank. 40 units of alcohol on Saturday night, that's about 20 pints of beer, 30 pints of beer on Sunday night, 20 again on Monday, she smokes 80 cigarettes a day, and um, she's up bright and early for my lecture. Um, I don't think I believe her, I think she'd be dead. So um, what I would suggest, what I think I'll do is delete her on the grounds that that's not likely to be true. But but this of course is a, it's a fine line because um, sometimes things which seem incredible may be true so you've got to be careful deciding what to believe and what's not to believe but I think it's reasonable to um, delete that one. Okay um, so to get this into um, into SPSS first of all we've got to save it so I'll save it and then SPSS insists that you close the file, so I'll close the file and I've run SPSS and here it is. So let's go file, open, what do I want to open? Data. And we then get this little box here. Now notice that it's looking for SPSS statistics files, which we haven't got. We've got an Excel file, so tell it about that. And also, I put it on the desktop, so get to where the file will be. Mine's on the desktop, and it's drink.xls. Click on that to tell it that's what you want to enter. For some reason it's not... Why isn't this working? There we are. Seems seem to take its time. Not sure why. Probably got the computer doing too much. Okay, so it's um, the, the box is ticked saying read variable names from the first row of data, which is obviously the way we set it up. So leave that as it is. We've got the right worksheet because there's only well, there's only one of them. And um, let's click OK. And now with luck, the data will be entered. Wearing away. Oh, come on. 
there we are and there is the data there we are and what we've got now is just the same data as before but of course it's in SPSS okay so what next well it's pretty straightforward really to do some analysis you can use analyze um, be quite nice to compare let's compare the means of um, the amount that males drink on Saturday night with the means with the amounts that females drink on Saturday night so let's try compare means now you may wonder what one sample t-test is independent samples t-test is etc etc um, one of the problems with SPSS is you'll never understand everything so if you've got something that seems to make sense go for it so I think means is what we want okay okay so it's now asking about the um, dependent list and the independent list now the dependent list are the variables that I think might depend on the independence and as I'm interested in the difference between males and females the obvious thing is to zap the sex into the independent list if I wanted to do the same for the course I could put that in the independent list. I won't because it'll just make life too complicated and I want to keep it simple. Okay, so we're interested in what they drink on Saturday night, but I think it's worth highlighting. So I held shift down and then um, scroll down. So I've highlighted all four variables. One of the things that SPSS is good for good at is mass producing results so if you've got say 20 or 30 or 40 um, variables analyze them all on one list and it makes life a lot easier so let's shove those in there next options and first of all we could get some other cell statistics the median is quite useful so let's bung that one in and there are lots of other things here you might if you don't know what the geometric mean is don't worry about it most of the things that SPSS um, offers you you won't understand and the thing is just not to not to worry about it what you do want though is an ANOVA table because this is the this ANOVA stands for analysis of variance and this is the routine that SPSS uses to um, calculate p-values or significance levels why don't they call them p-values or significance levels? Why doesn't SPSS give you some hint that that's where you get your p-values from? I wish I knew. It's um, They seem to assume perhaps it's a way of um, preserving the mystique. Um, perhaps they haven't thought of it. I don't know. Anyway, continue. And let's say OK. And now it's thinking about it. Okay, and here it is. So it's now it's now got a if I can get if I can get this right, it's now got what it calls a report, which is this thing here. So it's got sex, female, male. The um, female mean for Saturday night is 3.05. The male mean for Saturday night is 7.76. Um, so the males do seem to um, drink more than the females. You've also got the standard deviation and median there if you're interested. On Sunday night, um, it's 1.21 for the females and the males are obviously all suffering from a hangover here because this is just 2.55 units just over um, a pint of beer as opposed to nearly four pints. Um, so in all cases the males do seem to drink more. Is it statistically significant? Let's go, for, go through to the end and this is in the ANOVA table and what we've got here is that the um, let's take sat units and sex this is the um, difference between males and females on Saturday night the significance level is 0.000, 0 .000 which is roughly speaking zero 
What that means, of course, is that if there really was no difference between um, the amount males and females drink on Saturday night, if the so-called null or chance hypothesis was true, um, the probability of getting the results you've got, in other words, a difference of about four or five units of alcohol, um, is virtually zero. It's very, very unlikely. That is a very low significance level, so it's highly significant. You can be almost completely sure that this isn't a chance effect. Males really do drink more than females and if you took another sample um, you'd likely get the same answer. On the other hand for cigarettes that's not really true. Let's just look back at the report here. Um, for cigarettes males do drink more, do smoke more than females. This is, this is the cigarettes here. Two and a half for females, five and a bit for males. But this, the significance level here is flagged up as 0.01, And what this is saying is that if there really is no difference, the probability of getting that bigger discrepancy is 10%, which of course could happen. So that is saying that, um, you know, it may be a matter of chance. It's suggestive, but that is the sort of thing that could happen by chance. So at the standard 5% level, that is not significant, whereas the other three are. OK, so that's comparing means. Um, I think it's just worth pointing out two other things you can do with this program. First of all, descriptive statistics frequencies, you might, for instance, be interested in, well, let's put all the variables in. Um, what statistics do we want? Mean, median, I don't know, mode, standard deviation, let's have the kurtosis, whatever that means. Um, continue. What charts do we want? Let's go for histograms. Continue OK. And what it will do this time is it will produce us some histograms. Except it takes its time. This is needs to think about this fairly hard. Blah, blah. OK, it's producing some. Right, what do we have? OK, and this must be the, this, notice that histograms are quite hard work for us, it's taking its time, but with luck one will spring into life in a minute. Come on. There we are. OK, so this is the, if I can find the arrow, that's the AIDS distribution. OK, yeah, that's probably enough. That is the age distribution of the students. So most, oh no, oh no, it isn't, it's SAT units. That's the distribution of what people drink on Saturday night. In other words, there's lots of people who drink nothing, a few who drink a lot. It's, it's a pretty skewed distribution, as I think you'd expect. Um, the end, last thing I'll show you is if you want to produce a correlation matrix, correlate bivariate. Let's put them all in. And let's go for the Kendalls as well. Um, won't bother with the options this time. And there we are. This is the this is the Kendall correlation coefficient and in each cell you've got the correlation coefficient, a significance level, p value and a and the number and the number in the sample 91 and notice that's 91 rather than 92 because there is a lot of missing data for the first one okay i hope that made some sense i'll log off now